very kindly and spontaneously conveyed their concept to grace this uh, function and uh, to share their rich experiences dr t s reddy hyderabad and other well wishers of professor s ragavachari came forward to institute an annual endomed lecture at the institution of engineers hyderabad in memory of uh, professor s ragavachari mi an eminent uh, civil engineer and professor of uh, nit warangal on his birthday that is 15th august every year in persuasion of his desire elsewhere uh, andhra pradesh state center committee of the institution of engineers mm -hmm. had instituted an endowment lecture in memory of uh, late dr s ragavachari and organizes this uh, lecture every year at our center on his birthday that is 15th august accordingly the first endowment lecture has organized on 15th august 19 2015 at our state center in a befitting manner professor s ragavachari born on august 15th 1939 and obtained b in civil engineering from usman university a uh, professor chari was not only a simple professor but also practicing professional and also professor chari was involved a researcher in the field of transportation engineering and uh, planning he led the comprehensive transportation studies of the hyderabad urban development area in 1982-86 from rc warangal and also advisor to the municipal corporation of hyderabad and a member of the traffic engineering committee and specification and standard committee of the indian road congress member and also uh, government of ap and uh, traffic advisory committee member also he served as advisor and guide for several government department uh, is one of the most outstanding teacher uh, that india never produced and shall be remembered by all uh, dr nagbushan rao past chairman institution of engineers uh, uh andhra pradesh uh, state center will brief about the the endowment lecture since i am limiting myself here but i am very happy to bring your kind notice uh, to all of you uh, to to chief chief guest that jhmc is spread over almost 626 kilometers and uh, the road infrastructure is uh, inadequate for playing the uh, vehicles and leading the congestion of the road now ghms implement the srdp project the main objective of this project is to reduce the air pollution level by minimizing the fuel consumption and also by increasing intersection stop time delay and to provide a complete free road network to minimize travel time to increase the average journey speed also from 15 to 35 kilometers per hour everybody knows hyderabad has witnessed tremendous growth due to the rapid expansion of the industry it and financial sectors and educational institution etc and also steps already taken by gfcmc to meet the increasing travel needs uh, have been and failing short of the demand and leading to traffic congestion at many location the city has expanded up to the border and it encompasses an area of almost now of 1368 square kilometers the intensity of traffic between hyderabad and cities like warangal karim nagar and nizamabad and shamshabad etc is taking over 1.5 amount of our time to reach the core city area from outskirts so this project is very much uh, really we appreciate to the government of telangana for taking this project but even though still we are facing lot of problem uh, yesterday also we i observed i have taken time one and a half hour to reach my house from shamshabad to tarnaga i don't know when we will because of all after completion of this srdb project we can the roads the traffic we all will be in improve but uh, we will we will hope that definitely the hyderabad roads will be improved sir and uh, now i came to just i want to tell that uh, all uh, that is uh, telangana state center is organizing very regularly uh, this type of endowment lectures every year uh, on birthday of all eminent engineers uh, like uh, subbara tirupati reddy garu and pushottam rao poka krishnamoor rao garu gv subbara rao and t hanmant rao and rangnath swami and raghav chari today we are celebrating and dr vars nara tata rao and our mathuri gopal rao gurram koti reddy and dr venkateshwar rao and dr 
என் வி ஆரிலன் ராவ் அண்ட் ஹவுஸ் எல் கிருஷ் வெங்கட கிருஷ்ணாயர் அண்ட் ஸ்ரீனிவாஸ் ராவ் அண்ட் எம்எல் சுவாமி அண்ட் லாஸ்ட் ஏ ராமகிருஷ்ண என்டோமெண்ட் லெக்சர் ஹவுஸ் வேர் ஹேவிங் பஸ்வராஜ் இன் த டிசம்பர் லைக் தட் எவ்ரி இயர் வி ஆர் கண்டக்டிங் செவன்டீன் என்டோமெண்ட் லெக்சர் த என்டோமெண்ட் லெக்சர் பீங் டெலிவர்ட் பை த பீப்புள் ஆஃப் ஹை எமர்ஜென்சி வித் கன்சிடபிள் professional experience to throw light on uh, important and emerging topics of uh, today's relevance and also i am very happy to inform that institution of engineers has already entered its century year in september 2019 and shortly we are completing the 100 years of its service uh, in the engineering advancement for nation buildings in september 2020 we intended to celebrate this significant milestone with varied events in a befitting manner as uh, part of century celebrations the telangana state center of institution of engineer is organizing a national convention seminars and workshops round table conference etc in almost all engineering discipline the main aim is to disseminate the latest knowledge in engineering and technology to the engineering community uh, during december 2019 the institution of engineer telangana state center is organized 34th indian engineering congress was held from 27th to 29th december 2019 at hyderabad and uh, which is really uh, almost 1800 participants are uh, participants are present in that uh, engineering congress since you are all anxiously waiting to hear the talk from our eminent speakers i am limiting myself i hope that you will be enjoyed all the two talks uh, once again uh, on behalf of institution of engineers telangana state center and my own behalf i extend hearty welcome to the chief guest and guest of honor uh, thank you one and all now i am requesting uh, dr s nagbushan rao gar fi past chairman institution of engineers ap state center please introduce the uh, dr s ragavachari endowment lecture uh thank you dr rameshwara uh, it's uh, a privilege to me uh, to be associated with this uh, in talking about the endowment uh, lecture sixth endowment lecture of professor raghavachari and uh, it is fitting that uh, uh, to his name an endowment uh, fund is established a lead taken by dr t s reddy and other friends and uh, we have been doing it for the last 6 years and uh, it is fitting that uh, this uh, year uh, it's uh, uh, the invited lectures by professor veeraraghavan and dr vasantha will be adding colors to the endowment lecture so i'll uh, introduce uh, professor raghavachari uh, briefly done by uh, dr rameshwara but still i'll give some more details about professor raghavachari the name of uh, professor raghavachari itself is a huge inspiration to the entire group of uh, transportation engineers and um, his uh, his popularity and uh, his name has spread throughout the country and uh, to be brief uh, some of uh, the points given by dr rameshwara uh, i'll just go through with bio data born on uh, 15th august uh, 1939 as told already but he was not born with a silver spoon okay he struggled throughout very hard and continued his education uh, with the distinctions in all the classes obtained be degree from usmania university uh, in 1959 as a topper of the college and obtained masters degree in highway engineering from university of roorkee uh, in 1969 and then uh he worked in 1963 sorry and uh, worked as a lecturer in usmania university engineering college from 1963 to 1969 joined rec warangal the present nit warangal as assistant professor and continued up to 1998 he joined in 1979 uh, 79 and then continued uh, uh, no he joined in uh, uh, rec warangal 1969 and continued up to 1998 uh, as professor and head and uh, he in between he had the uh, phd degree from university of roorkee uh, in 1976 he had been an authority in transportation engineering throughout 
and transportation planning. Apart from teaching, did a number of consultancy projects for various organizations, including government departments and undertakings. And notably and foremost among them is the Hyderabad Area Transportation Study, HATS study between 1982 and 86, which stands as a classical document in transportation engineering. And the British Council invited him to be a visiting professor to some of the universities in UK. Professor Chari uh, uh, served as a member and chairman of many national committees. A few of them I'll just go through. Working Group on Transportation, that is National Commission on Urbanization, Government of India in 87-88. Member of ninth five-year plan, transportation sector expert. Then Chairman Accident Investigation Committee uh, appointed by the Government of AP for APSRTC. Member Research Advisory Group for CRRI. Then Member Traffic Engineering Committee, Indian Roads Congress. And then Member Traffic Engineering Committee and Specifications and Standards Committee of Indian Roads Congress. Member AP Traffic Advisory Committee, Government of AP. Then Advisor Municipal Corporation of Hyderabad. Then Emeritus Professor for Jain to you Hyderabad for five years. Then advisor to many government departments and organizations. And then he was he was really so uh, friendly with the, all the departments and uh, then engineers who used to go to him for any advice. He has to his credit some of the publications, more than 50 publications in national and international journals apart from a number of conferences. Then he guided 14 PhD scholars and many of uh, MTech students. And I was fortunate enough uh, that he was my guide for my PhD and awards. Um, Professor Chari is a recipient of many awards and a few of them are Government of AP, Best Engineering Teacher Award, Best Engineering Teacher Award, 1995, Sir Mokshagono Mishweshwaraya Award by IEI, Institution of Engineers, and Government of AP jointly for his contributions to transportation engineering. Uh, then Tata Endowment Fellowship in 1969, Senior Fellow Government of India, 1960-63. Then two gold medals from Usmani University for topping with the first rank in all branches of engineering from Osmania Engineering College at that time. Apart from an outstanding teacher, and expert consultation in uh, transportation engineering, Professor Chari is a great human humanitarian. He was empathetic to all those who needed his help. There was no question of no from him for any advice, whoever goes to him. With all the busy work, he used to devote a lot of time to his staff and scholars. Engineers from various departments used to love him for his simplicity and modesty. And also I should mention that Mrs. Bhagavachari used to host lunches and dinners when we used to visit to his home. That is the uh, culture that they developed in their house. And his retirement function in 1998, I vividly remember that it was a huge function, went on for four years, hundreds of his friends, his colleagues, the students and all his well-wishers have has attended there. It was a colorful function. And people said that it was unparalleled in the history of NIT Warangal, D then RGC Warangal. So that's how he was so popular. And uh, unfortunately, we lost him uh, when he reached Eternal World on 18th of August, 2014. And let us pray our homage to him through his endowment lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sandow, sir. Now I'm requesting if uh, Dr. DS, PS Reddy is ready, please uh, address uh, and give the some uh, two minutes talk, sir. PS Reddy, over to TS Reddy there. Thank you, Ramesh Ravagaru. Good evening to everyone. I mean, I don't want to do anything more than what uh, uh, our friend uh, Nagushna has said. And it was, I only want to just end, end with only one sentence. I mean, it was really like a guru shishya parampara. I mean, we were like shishyas and he was a real guru to us. That's all. And uh, he is always leading us in everyday life. Thank you. Thank you, Virlagwan and uh, Vasantagaru for accepting the 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And also, ACN Rao, you are lucky to have the very, that type of guru and you still completed your PhD with our Raghavara sir. Now, uh, daughter in also, there is a doctor, Sri Lata. Can, can you see that also? If you want to talk, you can to share their, their moments with our doctor, Raghavachar sir. Over to Sri Lata. Is there? Also, sir. Acharya, 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 You are here, Yes, sir. Acharil, sir. Sir, Acharil, sir, please. And the Kino Oscar, huh? I watch a girl in China, and they are purchasing a little bit. They are telling you electrical branchy. I am a more civil branchy. And Chata, you could have purchased like any. I am going to sell the nun. Malkinchi and Zala, Usman Yustogani, Ravata, Hari, Harisi Varangalagani, and Vendapur Chala Sarvi Chasan, V Chasapuru, and Gurinchi, Chala Chaka, Chipa, the Gopom, Hap, Pandit, especially transport engineering law, and which is not like a daring Pesci, Salomon Chipa, and the Matina Kibu. So we went there and we participated in that. And the and Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sir, can we remember Japal, sir? Sir, please, only two minutes. Happy Independence Day to all of you. Good evening. I'm so happy, so proud to say these few words about late Professor Sesham Raghavachari. I'm happy to see that his uh, daughter, Sumana, and his daughter-in-law, Sridhar are also present here. Uh, Raghavachari was my class fellow in intermediate engineering and EMTech programs. Mm -hmm. So we studied together for almost two plus three, five plus three, eight years. Uh, we were in IIT Roorkee during the period 1960 to 63. Uh, I don't want to say anything about his technical capabilities because Dr. Nagabhushan Rao, his former PhD student, knows more about it. He was a great person. He used to study under the tree in Gadiyanaram. His uh, maternal uncle, Menamavagar Prochanto Varu, Sadukunaru. All around the country, people know him. And he was always the greatest charisma of Professor Raghavachari was his simplicity and his straightforwardness. He never used to mince any words. And he was always available as somebody has just now said, he was the so-called Guru Shishya Parampara. I'm so happy that uh, Institution of Engineers is organizing this lecture today, 15th of August, a good day in his honor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Now I'm requesting Engineer K. Bhavanarayana, Chief General Manager, Lee Associates, South Asia, Private Limited. Please introduce the today's guest of honor to the, all the participants. Thank you, Rashra, sir. Wish you happy Independence Day to all of you. It is my privilege to introduce Dr. Sri Vasanta Madam, guest of honor for this meeting. She working as a chief engineer and chief operational officer in Hyderabad Road Development Corporation Limited. Her educational qualifications are 
She did Bachelor of Engineering in Civil Engineering from Usmania University in 1985. She did Master of Engineering from Usmania University in 1990. Uh, she did Post Graduation Diploma in Environmental Science and Management from Hyderabad Central University in 2002. She completed her Doctor of Philosophy from JNTU Hyderabad in year 2013 on the topic, Integration of Environmental Specifications in Contract Conditions for Highway Works. Again, she did post-graduation diploma in Alternative Dispute Resolutions from Nalsar in 2014. She is a fellow member in the Institute of Engineers India. She is a member in General Standards and Specifications Committee of IRC. She is the first lady doctorate among civil engineers in r &B department in Government of Telangana. And again, she has a lot of experience in the transportation sector. Her experience in various fields like designing, planning, and procurement for IVA projects, detailed designing, techno financial reviews, financial appraisal of the projects, selection of consultants and contractors for various big projects, evaluation of tenders, contract management, monitoring, liaison with major construction agencies and other government bodies. She played a key role in getting sanctions of about 3,600 kilometers of national highway road network projects for newly formed government of the world. She published various technical papers in NICMAR, in Construction General. Her field experience, she started her life as a career in uh, engineering as a junior engineer in NCM, NCB Delhi in the year 1985. Later, she joined as assistant executive engineer in irrigation department in 1987. And again, she worked as assistant executive engineer in r &B department in 1990. And she selected as a deputy executive engineer on direct equipment in r &B department in 1993. Then she promoted as executive engineer in r &B department in 2005. And again, she promoted as a superintendent engineer in year 2014. And again, she promoted as a chief engineer in the year 2019. And presently she working as a chief engineer for Hyderabad Road Development Company. Further to this, she worked on deputation on various departments. In the education sector, she worked as an associate professor in Nikmar, Hyderabad, and as a project engineer in NRID. And she associated with NAC as a faculty for training to civil engineers on procurement procedure for highway projects. Again, she worked as, as a professional in JNNERM projects and AP FIDC. She has been nominated as a participant for LTPM program on contract management of highway works in New York, USA in year 2008. Srimati C. Vasanta will be delivering lecture today on topic, a macro planning perspective in upcoming macro cities with concept of small investments for large benefits. Now I request Madam to deliver our lecture. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Bhavan Arana. Madam, our time is 15 minutes, Madam. Now you can start your talk. One five. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Happy Independence Day. Greetings to all eminent engineers, elders, and retired chief engineers, and members of NIST of Engineers India. And it is really a privilege and a memorable moment in my life that I have given a chance or an opportunity to deliver a lecture on the occasion of Sri Ra, late Raghava Charigaru, who worked in municipal corporation. And he was also like me, member in standard specifications and all. And he was like a Guru Dronacharya for all of us. We may not be working under him, we might not have worked with him. And we, we were not his students, but through his books, lectures, 
and uh, his references we admitted him as our guru and we followed in transportation engineering and planning and especially junction improvements and so many things this today's lecture actually it is not a like uh, academic uh, subject or uh, academic lecture but what we have done in the hyderabad city i just wanted to make it as an a, in a technical manner and i wanted to present it to all the elders and eminent engineers even take their feedback before completion of this um, road network planning actually micro planning we have taken the words of actually our honorable minister is very interested to develop hyderabad as a global city so every day meetings conducting convening and uh, coming into some conclusions to planning some big big projects all the projects like flyovers rubs robs and subways underpasses but it has been a plan in ghmc from past 7 to 10 years still works are going but people are not happy the ease in traffic movement the comfort in travel citizens are not feeling so so it is the concept of missing links development of missing links in road network it is a really i can say it's a brain child of shri kt ramaragar any leader or any eminent engineers either was any uh, administrator they dream big they want big results and they would like to put big investments give the big impact and big impact. but these macro planning next slide okay good good this concept of missing link design is very teeny projects small small roads small small investments but i should not say it is giving big relief because i was heading i am heading this but i request all the elders and eminent engineers really what impact it is giving in city and really is it useful and uh, i just want a feedback next the concept of missing links design has developed in the ghmc of course with the association of lee consultants but this uh, they have done the network planning and all hope they must have also followed the principle what right now what i i developed the philosophy of behind this these are actually for the very economical projects and eco friendly projects and performance functionality is a 100% next this micro macroscopic models actually in highway planning there are two three models when i went to the literature and study one is a macroscopic model one is microscopic model one is a dynamic model and this macroscopic model traditionally used to planning in a greater networks over a longer time period the in dynamic model means the when the situation arises when the when it gives the lot of pressure to take the decision and the force then we'll think of the some relief measure te temporarily then we approach to the dynamic model so microscope model stimulate traffic flow taking into consideration several traffic characteristics flow speed and in density with considering their relationship with each other in this uh, two three steps they have we can calculate this is something like uh, academic and arithmetic some trip generations in a route we can have categorize the trips shopping trips or uh, working trips medical trips 
or just like uh, school going trips in peak hours, half peak hours. That's again trip distributions. Next step is for the strip distribution, which will be origin and destination matrix we can adopt. Model split, that is also ordinary, uh, origin and destination for travel, what the mode they're using and all, and traffic assignments, so on. So these models were actually originally developed as a model traffic on a district transportations, not like very big cities and all, subnetworks, improving such corridors, including freeways and parallel tunnels and surface sheet street grid networks. As such, next. So microscopic models are traditionally used for planning a greater network over a longer time. This stimulation we aimed with this to obtain origin and destination markets that would match the latest figure of traffic behavior in Hyderabad city based on existing road network and traffic volume. It is actually a data input mode. And from macro planning perspective, it will provide a critical radial connectivity for the city and reduce the pressure on axial east-west zone roads are very important links which are routinely clogged. The microscopic model, on other hand, is used for smaller network. This is of a database, actually. Next. Next, please. So this concept of missing link connectivity, first of, really, first of its kind in India, in it, now it is implemented in Hyderabad and Cyberabad. This Hyderabad is divided into four zones, east, east, west, north, south. This is noted the best concept improvement in urban road network in developing countries are in upcoming metro cities like Hyderabad and Hyderabad. It is providing of missing links. It is not a simply to provide a additional road space. Generally, we are doing the, we are providing additional road space in vertically going, like building flyovers, road over bridge road, or road over rail or bridge, or flyovers, and otherwise underpasses. And we are cons constraining our mindset to the traffic flow which now existing and traffic directions which now currently running without thinking to dispersing the traffic in other directions and deviating the root paths. So the missing link basic concept is, it is not a road additional road space. It is an additional lanes, additional path, additional traffic routes. The, it is taken as up, upcoming metro cities as engines, as you all know, the metro cities are engines of economic growth. This is, this road network planning is very time bound completion one with all small investments by strengthening the huge transport network. Each link road in the networks serves a distinct set of functions. Each link of 300 meters to 1.2 kilometers, we have the largest link is somewhere two, three kilometers, two roads. Otherwise, 1.5 is our longest road. It may be funny to hear, but we have done this. And uh, the shortest length is 150 meters to 300 meters. Each link is carrying its own benefits and the distinct features in carrying traffic flow and giving the local upgradation and ease to traffic jams. Next. The link road network, road network can be based on mean values using static traffic assignment techniques such as travel time, travel distance, and level of congestion. It is treated as a multi-commodity flow, not as a single commodity flow. Like it is not like that a water supply system or electric line, like only a single 
commodity flow. It has its own origin and distance nodes. Concept as a new evaluation measure for designing road network. This is, I can say this, this is a, a new concept that you can add in designing the road networks, which is a different from the existing methods. It is improving the aesthetics of city. It is it improving the disaster prevention and giving a relief of road traffic, improving, reduce the delays, create a free flowing road network and improve safety along the, this stretch of the link road. Next. Next. Overall, this Hyderabad city, we can divide in, we divide it into three regions, like it's a core city area and city at inner ring road area and area between inner ring road and outer ring road. Altogether, during their survey, we are associated with the Lee consultants. And I, I am privileged that I am introduced by Lee consultants. And we identified the 375 kilometers of road network, which is to be improved, which is to be connected, or which is to be uh, connected to ORR. Among the 375 kilometers, there is an existing road length going in different directions from look and corner, that is the 250 kilometers. Out of 250 kilometers, there are many missing links, so they are taking a long, long routes to reach one road to other, or to reach one other area to other area. So we identify the links of 126 kil links kilometers with the kilometers of 78 under phase one. Because of uh, budget constraints, right now under phase one, we have taken up 44 kilometers with 30 links. These are all taken up in during lockdown period started works in April. Now they are almost almost nearing completion. These 37 out of 20, 24 links now just getting completed. Next, please. Each link varying, which is varying from 300 meters to 1.2 kilometers is Reducing travel distance, minimum of one and a half kilometer to five kilometer. It will be more than that, but not less than one. Next. So this project development of new 24 roads have been in progress various parts of the city. I hope all seniors and elders, eminent engineers, retired chief engineers are all in and around Hyderabad uh, colonies and uh, outer ring road and inner ring road side. Hope they must be experiencing this ongoing projects. Much of this is constructed in the eastern and western regions. Location of these roads is shown in figures. These are link roads. And uh, these roads are uh, expected to form an integral part of existing road network and contribute in achieving the long-term development vision of the upcoming micro city. Metro city transportation plan. They are going to play a very key role, key role in road network development project in Hyderabad city. Next. These are proposed. Proposed as an improvement for works which are ongoing. Proposed as a part of road network development project. These are identified many deficiencies in the system and these are designed to use the efficient land use plan identified and evaluated alternative alignment impacts on system predicting volumes for alternatives finding most efficient travel routes generating travel directions all new directions finding closest facilities giving the shorter routes, defining service areas based on travel time,
taking existing road network situation and i we design an ideal situation the taking identified links between signalized these few of the links are between signalized and major unsignalized intersections and main roads next these are reducing queuing traffic and pollution these are improving access for local people to the strategic road network to help enhancement of commercial establishment and the value of the properties along the links reduction of carbon levels during the journey time reducing the journey time open up all anti social and the dark areas i can explain this while doing taking up the each and every link reduces risk of death of emergency patients giving shorter routes to the ambulance and these are also used for the livelihood of small and big roadside vendors like bajji wala pan puri wala vindi wala shoe shoe wala anybody can have a small small business they can it it is really used for the like a growth corridor for improvement of the livelihood of poor people and the reduction of travel time for school buses giving great relief to teeny tots and parents so this is really a great uh, benefit which we i really never uh, visualized and never felt but when we are doing one of the road one of the parent she came and said so it is a great road my child can now go in 3 minutes to the school whereas they were traveling in van hours together hello next so these links need of the scheme felt these links provide an important route between existing colonies work areas like financial district high tech city from kukatpalli sherlingampalli chandanagar jubli hills kajaguda and to orr etc avoiding huge expenditure towards land acquisition there is no land, zero land acquisition in all link roads this is very happy to say with the cooperation of ghmc and hmba they have given some benefits for the who has who will give the plot, plot owners who will give the setbacks and the road weights some tdr or some other scheme and so we could take the land at free of cost even our sir eminent engineer nagushnan sir is there he was also so kind that they have given the engineering staff college land for the laying the four lane road along the their boundary and avoid there is there is no utility shifting like um, as they are not much passing through the existing residential colonies and we there is another benefit maximum reuse of earth and rock is used as the road material and we use the usage of locally available material the links not only use the traffic flow but reduce the travel distance this why i say these are very small in, in financial in, in criteria the investment for any projects like say this is the flyover of four lane 1 km length costs at least more than 45 crores a underpass of two lane with a length of 100 meters costs more than 15 crores a steel vup or underpass a four lane of 200 meters length costs more than 20 crores a rub a four lane 200 meters approach length costs more than 45 crores a rov of four lane 1 km approach length costs more than 75 crores and the traffic intensity or traffic density or traffic volume which are passing through the them after development are estimated and the train traffic it can be diverted on these link roads 
these link loads can in carry the same intensity or density of the traffic which are constructed four lane with a one kilometer estimate it is not nowhere it costed more than 13 crores next this hyderabad road development corporation is a special purpose vehicle formed in 2017 it is the first they visualized a very big huge projects like model corridors developing all existing hyderabad roads into four lane six lane with a beautiful footpath with a track yard and storm water drains and uh, parking islands and median widths they exercised they spent a huge time for the survey and the dprs and uh, at the end of the day they felt that they cannot do it in hyderabad so they could not take up after that to improve the road work system the concept of misting link has come and it is designed and planned the consultancy services we avail from li associates this 126.2 kilometers which are developed corridor was proposed to bring them into motorable which is these are all non motorable only car track and many locations are not open to the public are not uh, even walkable areas all hillocks jungles occupied under uh, encroachments of some private people uh, etc and uh, about 44 44.7 km kilometers of road width estimated cost was 313.65 crores and our phase 1 now we are going to complete out of 24 link roads this 24 links of 26 kilometers are reducing almost 85 kilometers of travel distance now i am happy to share with you few of links which are developed which you can travel and enjoy the ride and comfort and uh, reduction of travel distance and travel time also next sir this is called corridor number 2 next please this is called corridor number 12 jv hills path to mazir banda this prabhupada layout the corridor was before work start it was like this totally a dumping yard with all bushes jungle that means and it cannot be even walk through in between the buildings up under development now it is going to be finished even bt is also laid right now the corridor is becoming like this this road has taken up from 7.41 is administrative sanction cost and technic uh, project cost is coming little lesser and this length of 1 km is reducing the travel distance of 3 kilometers next this is sir you know the serlingampalli area serlingampalli zonal office in front of zonal office to serlingampalli and there is a chandanagar railway station after chandanagar railway station after a half a kilometer you can join the ns65 that is chandanagar but there is, there was no road at all in between like bushes and all it was uh, passing through the many farm houses and unused land so now we laid a four lane road with median is almost 1.27 kilometers up to chandanagar railway station now we are planning ruv with the cost of patik uh, crores the four lane rub and from serlingampalli zonal office to chandanagar right now we are traveling through chandanagar railway station otherwise high tech city kukatpalli and uh, meyapur and chandanagar that that area that routes you are taking after completion of this route it is within the 2 kilometers travel 
you can directly reach inox building on pune hyderabad pune hyderabad highway ns65 this is giving a wonderful comfort to the public you are really traveling from that area to high tech city side hyderabad university side lingampalli mm -hmm. side nallagandla side next madam just to uh, conclude within few minutes okay, okay. and next other is a botanical garden to afis pet railway track next please this is road number 23 sir this i just want to mention this is leather park to nandi hills there was no road at all it was literally anti social area it was under uh, encroachments of many private private properties it was just like a jungle now we have the raya durgam to road number 45 you can travel within 1 and 1/2 km in 10 minutes next please this is the road along the engineering staff college of india you know that the major junction traffic congestion is in kajaguda junction to relieve that junction traffic um, um, congestion we planned a, a road along the kajaguda engineering staff college of india along the lake now beautiful lake road is getting ready for inauguration next this is the from isb to lanko hills a road right now people are traveling 7 to 8 kilometers minimum to reach lanko hills to isb and financial district due to this link it is coming only 2 and 1/2 kilometers and 3 kilometers from lanko hills to isb okay. next this is called a road number 41 from attapu to bahapugat right now we are traveling 4 kilometers from attapu to bahapugat reach now we formed a uh, horizontal link along the mosi it is 1 km 7 750 m length you can reach to babugat bridge in few minutes from atapus next this is uh, nak road to kphb that you know the road number 42 it is coming also very well next next 43 right now kondapur chaurasta from kondapur to high tech city coming from 3 4 kilometers and a minimum travel time is 45 minutes now you can just take your vehicle diversion of the traffic from rta office directly join with the rub at vasanta city and malaysian township rub and behind the nak kukatpally flyover in 4 minutes 4 to 5 minutes traveling 1 and 1/2 kilometers next This is Firjadi Goda to Oppalk, Central Ground Water Road. This is all Western Side Roads. Next, next, next. That this is the recently road we laid. This is Prashashan Nagar from Nai Vihar to Prashashan Nagar Lane. Both the ends were it was thick jungle, full of rocky area, hillocks. It is just four hundred meters road. but travel reducing the travel distance to road number 45 road number 36 and kbr park andhra jyoti side nandi hill side and all within 3 4 minutes they are reaching to that place this travel so i am concluding sir thank you thank so you. much for giving this is the yeah. thank thank you very much thank you very much osanta gar only the one thing that uh, you are we are telling that uh, skill and you are using your thanks to the our chairman has sent out really very good but that land is belong to the institution of india's land we are losing yes. 10 acres is at least uh, anywhere you can use the equivalent land madam please be useful for the Sir, actually generation. land issues and all are dealt by uh, hmd and gh okay. we will write a letter at least you recommend yeah. whatever land we are losing right that now whatever the um, demands from the minister of engineers we are fulfilling like construction of the compound wall gate and everything sir <laughs> So least, I'll try to do my best. Equal and land also will give the letter to the honourable minister. Yeah. And you also recommend whatever land we are losing, you give anywhere in the city, no problem. Yes, yeah, but it is not in my power, sir. That goes to the. Okay. Anyway, thank you, madam. Thank you. You're really, really, really very good. Talk. Thank you. Now, before that, I am. But I am happy to say that this is all done within three to four months period, sir. Yes, sir. Very good. 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 Very good.
uh, and now i am requesting professor sl uh, lingra sir we want to talk to you and give the message sir please go to sl lingra satnam pichawa Pras Dhingra has to unmute. Yeah. Sorry, unmute. Yeah. Yes, sir. Is unmute. Mute. Dhingra, eh? sir. Ah, yeah. uh, hello. hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm very much uh, thankful to all of you for arranging the memorial lecture by um, the two experts. So I know everyone, and Ragvachari and the Justo. They were. very very close to me even the ts reddy as well because both of them arranged uh, phd bio oc of uh, dr reddy then where i was invited by nit warangal and he was a gem of a person you know very simple i mean really unassuming character and thoroughly thorough gentleman and uh, having lot of uh, uh, knowledge I mean, he was sort of a doyen of transportation engineering. So with that, I think I can. And then uh, let's uh, uh, in the next lecture start. Thank you very much, and uh, namaste. Thank you, uh, sir. Thank, thank you. you very much, sir. Now I am requesting Professor B. Vinayak Ram, Associate Professor, Bits Pilani, Hyderabad. Please introduce today's chief guest to all the participants. Over to Vinayak. Over to Vinayakram. Vinayakram. Atnam. Yeah. Am I am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, I wish you all um, uh, before I start introducing. I wish you all a very happy Independence Day and a very warm welcome to the sixth uh, Sir Sir Memorial Endowment Lecture on Developments and Innovations in Highway Pavement Construction. it's a it's my great privilege to for me to introduce today's chief guest and invited speaker my own uh, inspiration to learn more and more in pavement engineering professor a v raghavan currently working as a professor in civil department of civil engineering at iit madras uh, he has uh, more than four decades of experience in teaching research and uh, industrial consultancy uh, professor v raghavan has received uh, many many awards i will try to read a few important ones Uh, Indian Roads Congress, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, Birth Centenary Award in 1994. Then IRC Medals for his best papers in the years 91, 93, 97, 2004, 2008, 2011, and so on. And IRC Commendation Certificate Awards for his highly commended papers in the years uh, 92, 94, 98, 2000, 2015. 2015. So, um, Professor Veer Lakshman is a recipient of uh, UGC Career Award for uh, Young Teachers and National Award. um for promoting engineering career teacher in india uh, from the indian society of uh, technical education iste he was also awarded the vishwakarma award under the category outstanding academicians uh, techno technologists scientist and innovator by the construction industry development council uh, he also has received the award and plaque for distinguished services to the institute by the iit madras alumni association professor veer raghavan Uh, popularly known as AV, Professor AV has published over 100 research papers in journals uh, of top order, and then uh, over 150 papers in national and international conferences proceedings. Uh, he has coordinated over 15 major research uh, projects with a cumulative, you know, uh, budget of about uh, 12 crores. Uh, now, now also even uh, even now he is coordinating or uh, rather networking with 10 academic institutions. Uh, by handling two major research projects sponsored by NRADA on performance evaluation of rural roads with uh, cold bituminous mixes and performance evaluation of rural roads with waste plastics uh, in bituminous mixes with a total budget of around 29.291.2 lakhs that is 2.91 crores uh, he has also to his credit has co-authored four textbooks uh, on surveying highway engineering that is uh, kanna jastu and veer raghav that is the addition which we have got in the Uh, 10th edition and 11th edition is under print right now. Then highway materials and pavement testing, 5th edition by Nameshendan Brothers and uh, pavement drainage theory and practice by CRC Press. 
Professor Veera Agavan is a Fellow of Institution of Engineers and a Fellow of International Society of uh, uh, Engineering Asset Management. Uh, he is an authority there, of course. Uh, he is a member of uh, the National Panel of Experts to implement value engineering program to promote the use of new technologies, materials and equipment in road projects by the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, Government of India. Then, of course, uh, he has been the member of uh, HRB, Flexible Pavement, Composite Pavement, Road Maintenance and Asset Management and Highway Specification Standards Committee of IRC. So all the code, codal provisions, uh, we can see his name uh, printed there as a committee member. And he is a technical advisor to RASTA, Center for Road Technology in Bangalore. Then a member of uh, Technical Committee of Karnataka Road Development Corporation. Then member standing National Advisory Committee on the use of latest technologies and innovative materials in the construction of rural roads under PMGSV, NRID and Government of India. And he is an independent director of SPV Road Companies of uh, LNT IDPL. And uh, he is also a chairman of Board of Governors for TechWIP, uh, Government College uh, Iduki, chairman for the cluster level PG program committee of Kerala Technological University for a Yernakulam Center, uh, then chairman of uh, several other committees at IIT Madras. Overall, I can say that uh, it's really fitting to have a legendary professor to deliver the endowment lecture here for another legend. Or to Professor A. V. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now I'm requesting uh, Dr. A. V. Raghavan, FIE Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, IIT Chennai. Please address and deliver the endowment lecture, sir. Please vote to the V. Raghavan, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Rameshwar Rao. I think uh, my screen is visible. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Thank you. So I have, in fact, a fairly long association with Professor Raghavachari since 1981 when I joined Bangalore University as a research scientist. So even though I was not his direct student, I attended many of his tri summer training courses at Morangal. Later, I interacted with him almost frequently uh, every year to discuss topics of mutual interest. I used to admire his the way he grasped the points. Even if you give him a thousand pages book, in the, maybe in a few minutes time, he'll grasp and ask questions in the book. So such, just such was his grasping power. I learned many, many things from him. Number, number one, to be a good human being. Number two, a, a good teacher, a researcher. I think I am able to follow his footsteps to the best possible way. So I am, feel privileged and honored to deliver the sixth endowment lecture of Professor Raghavachari on his birthday. Incidentally, 15th of August happens to be my official birthday as well. They are coincidence. Okay, wish you happy birthday, sir. Happy birthday, Thank sir. you. Wish you happy birthday, sir. Thank happy return, sir. So, I thought I will talk today about the developments and innovations in highway payment construction. So, there may be engineers who are, may not be an expert in highway engineering. So, I thought I will take you over from where we started and where we are going and what are the issues and concerns. Maybe I may take about 45 minutes. Yes, sir. No problem. Thank you. So, to give uh, statistics about the road network in India, India has got the second largest road network in the world next to America. We have about 1.32 lakh kilometers of national highways, 1.56 or 57 lakh kilometers of state highways, uh -huh. and majority of the roads are uh -huh. other roads. Uh -huh. The significant proportion of them are rural roads. The traffic, nearly 65% of the freight and about 80% of the passenger traffic is carried on the roads. Vehicle growth is more than 10%. Even though the national highways contribute to less than 2% of the road network, they carry more than 40% of the total traffic. So they are heavily trafficked. So the issues and concern that are the problems that we face is how should we design, construct, maintain these huge road infrastructure. Are they sustainable? What are the issues or concerns in the design, construction, and maintenance? That's what I will take you over the next 45 minutes or so. So earlier we used to say, go to other country of the world if you want to see good quality roads. Now there is no need to go anywhere to any other country. We are able to see good quality roads. Some of them are bituminous. Some of them, like this Yamuna Expressway, are concrete. And even rural roads are now between the surface roads. So what are the issues and concern in the construction of this? Are we right or are we wrong? This is something that needs to be debated 
I will take you over this. I think Dr. Vasanta, in fact, she told all bituminous roads. I just wanted to ask maybe at the end, are those roads sustainable? What the design that they adopted? She told you they used locally available materials, but further, maybe that at the end of my presentation, she may even think alternate methods of design. So what are the issues and concerns here? So when you want to select and construct a road, a pavement, the pavement can be a bituminous pavement, it can be a concrete pavement, or it can be a composite pavement. So what are those? We'll, I'll come to this issue. But what I want to emphasize at this point is that we select the payment type based on the initial cost. We are not looking at how long it will last, what are the maintenance requirements, what are the vehicle operating costs because of these deteriorated roads. So in a nutshell, one should consider the life cycle cost while we select the payment type. When you talk about this life cycle cost, there are several factors that influence the payment type selection. Number one, the wheel loads. So many people, some of the people even consider cars, but the wheel loads of commercial vehicles, their volume, the axle configuration, axle loads, tire pressure, and the growth factors play a key role on the performance of these roads. What we generally, the consultants do, or the other designers do is that they do a three-day count or a seven-day volume count. They predict the volume and then design the payment. But of late in the last 15 years or so, as an independent director of LNT, every three months we monitor the traffic growth of different categories of vehicles. What you find is that there is a significant shift in the configuration of the heavy commercial vehicles. So with the result, the performance design values will change. Secondly, the design also depends upon the subgrade soil and its properties. There are different component layer materials that we use in the design, their availability. Here again, the consultant, the designer, takes up some road, assign the road, they go collect the material, design the road. But tomorrow, maybe that if the project may take three years, five years, or even two years or one year, after the award of the work, when you go to the site and look at the quarries, the soil may be available, soil may not be available. But by then, the work would have been tendered, awarded to the contractor. If he does not get the material as he wants, what is to be done? So there are issues and concern about the alternate payment design that need to be considered. More importantly, the climatic factors play an important role on the performance of the payment. The drainage conditions, both surface as well as surface, subsurface drainage, environmental factors, the fund availability before you choose the payment type. Uh, Dr. Vasanta, when she was uh, talking, I think each kilometer of the road cost nearly seven crores to 10 crores. So is that required or the alternate designs? That is something that we need to learn, discuss. And lastly, it also depends upon the type of contract. Is it an EPC contract? Is it a performance-based maintenance contract? Is it a build-operate transfer project? Or is it design, build, operate, and transfer? Accordingly, the agency decides the payment type. So in a nutshell, what I can say is there is nothing like a one-size-fit-all design. Mm -hmm. Designs will vary depending upon the type of soil, depending upon the traffic, depending upon the climatic conditions, depending upon the contract, and depending upon the fund availability. So this is a vehicle classification that has been adopted in the US. Maybe that in the years to come, we may also shift over to many of the vehicle configurations like this. We have the two axle tracks. We find the two axle volume growth rate is decreasing. We then we thought that some of them shifted to three axle, the three axle again is decreasing. People are now shifted to tridem axle and a multi axle. So the load that is carried on these vehicles increased significantly. The number of vehicles decreases. So overall, I find that it's a win win situation. We find that the damages caused to the, by these roads, multi axle and tridem axle, is not as severe as that of a single axle, two axle or a three axle. Why I'm talking about that is that. We consider this to be a legal axle load. The design axle load is 8.2 tons. The legal axle load was 10.2 tons. 
the Ministry of Road Transport Highways in July 2018 increased the legal axle load to 11.5. So what are the implications of this increased axle loads on payment design, payment construction, payment performance? You assume 8.2, but permit 11.5. So they will cause more and more damage to the highways. In fact, LNT is keen to undertake a study about the change in vehicle configuration from two axle to three axle to multi tridem axle to a multi axle because the total revenue depends upon the axle configuration. The payment maintenance depends upon the damage this vehicle cost, uh, contributes. I think it's a good research study with some of these uh, participants who are teachers can study the effects of change in axle configuration on the performance of the payment, on the total revenue, and what can be done. But Remember one point, traffic plays a critical role on the performance as well as on the total revenue. So in a flexible payment, if you look, it consists of an embankment, a subgrade, a sub-base, a base course, and a bitumenous layer. Many of the practice engineers are aware that this bitumenous layer, which is only maybe around 200 millimeters or less than that, will cost, cost nearly 40% of the total payment layer cost. But the load is expected to distribute over a wider area. So I do not require any good, very good quality material at the bottom. But I need better materials here for better load distribution in these layers. This sub-base is essentially a drainage layer. So their gradation, their thickness play a very important role on the performance of these papers. There are why we are considering alternate designs. If you consider the conventional payment, which I showed now, a bitumenous road, a granular base, and a granular sub-base, we consider two critical stresses and strains. One is the radial tensile strain at the bottom of the bitumenous layer, and the vertical compulsive strain on top of the subgrade. We assume and we and know that if this value exceeds the permissible value, then bottom of cracks will occur, which are called the fatigue cracks. If these strain values exceed the allowable value, it will develop a roughing on the payment surface. So we consider only two distresses in the payment design, one a fatigue cracking, one a rutting. But we don't consider any other distresses at this juncture. So this is what we were adopting till about 2012. Conventional sub-base, conventional base course, conventional bit of courses. Again, we had some wrong specifications. I have to admit that there are wrong specifications. There were wrong specifications that caused premature failure of the payment. Later, we found that materials availability is a major issue. Materials are not available. In that case, we thought that it is better that we consider a composite payment or an inverted payment. Out of the 59 lakh kilometers of the road in India, I mentioned that majority of them are other roads. If you consider accepting that natural highways, a part of the state highways, majority of the roads in India will not carry more than 30 million standard axles during design lines. When materials are not available, what are the alternate designs that are available which will ensure reduction in the grade consumption as well as improve or extend the life of the payment? In that case, we found that inverted payments can be considered what I mean inverted is that if I know this modulus as E1, E2, E3, and E4, when you have a cement treated base, the modulus of this base course will be higher than the modulus of the surface. Therefore, I call it as inverted. But there are issues and concerns even in the inverted payment. But the advantage is that when you have an inverted payment, you can reduce the thickness of the bitumenous layer and hence the cost of construction as well. So the IRC in 2012, brought the design alternate design, wherein they introduced a cement-treated sub-base, a cement-treated base. But remember, when you have a cement layer, this layer is likely to crack. So they have already suggested you can have an aggregate interlayer, which will retard, not prevent, retard the appearance of cracks on the bitumenous layer. So what happens when you have a cement-stabilized layer is that, under repeated applications of the load, there will be a tension at the bottom of the stabilized layer, bound layer. With the repeated loads, this is likely to crack. Initially, the crack will be like this, which is the bottom of crack, phase one, 
and with the repeated applications of the loop the crack will number will increase from 1 to 3 is an effective fatigue phase and eventually the crack will propagate more and more and the modulus of that layer will be equivalent to that of a granular state so this what are the issues here when there are cracks occurring on a cementated base these cracks will occur and appear and extend to the top bituminous layer so to retard that they have we have suggested a crushed stone base as a cushioning layer in between which will retard the appearance of crack on the top and that is a function so that is a crack prevention layer so this is from the i think uh, Mr. Jasun Kumar is here as he was in CGM at the NHA, he was aware of this. So this is a crack that I observed in Ahmadabad Padodara Expressway all along the shoulders. I was surprised to know why there's a longitude crack all along the shoulders in Ahmadabad Padodara Expressway. I tried to find out what went wrong. So I tried to excavate, took pits and went up the subgrade level and subbase level. I could find cracks on this. This was a cement treated base. So they have widened the embankment. They did not do a bench cutting. When they widened this, this because the settlement of the subgrade and embankment, the cement treated layer cracked. From the cement treated base, the crack has propagated up to the granular subbase, to the wet mix macadam, to the DBM and BC. You can find the cracks there. So these are some points that we need to take precautionary measures before when we design the road. IRC came out with a third design wherein instead of their cement aggregate layer, we can go in for a semi layer, stress ab absorbing membrane interlayer, which can be a bitumen impregnated geosynthetic layer, can also be provided, which can retard the appearance of the crack. We also thought that we can reuse the material again and again. Why not we use the reclaimed asphalt pavement materials? So, above the cement treated base, yeah, reclaimed asphalt pavement material can be used as a good binder course or a base course. We can also go in for a yes, granular subbase, a cemented base, an aggregate layer. This again another catalog. And lastly, we have a cement treated subbase, wet mix macadam, and a vitreous layer. So what I am posing at this point of time is that there is nothing like a single design. There is nothing like a single common material that can be used. There are alternate designs available. I, I do not know whether Dr. Vasanta has considered all these alternate designs before arriving at the final design for the roads that she proposed. Maybe that in future, when she is taking up more roads, perhaps she can consider the alternate designs and come out with a cost effective design, which is likely to perform longer. We can also go in for a concrete payment. The concrete payment takes up the load by the slab action, and hence the performance is much better. But again, there are issues of noise, joint, uh, because of joints, uh, it, they're not as smooth, as comfortable like a bituminous road. These are facts that one has to uh, accept, but there are issues and concern, even in the case of concrete payment. But what I want to emphasize at this point of time is that we design the payment type based only on the initial cost. But depending upon the design, the payment will warrant maintenance frequently there's a routine maintenance is supposed to be done every year. There may be a recent requirement for a minor rehabilitation, maybe on the end of five years, seven years, eight years. Or there can be requirement for a major rehabilitation at the end of 10 years, years or 12 years. So these costs are to be considered. Different designs will warrant different maintenance. So we are constructing roads today based on the fund availability. But at the same time, we should also look at will we get fund to maintain and operate these highways in the years to come. That's the issue that I'm posing now. So different roads will have, different payments will have different cost. You have to bring back the cost to the base year and compare the present worth of cost. For example, I have designs. A design A will warrant maintenance in the 11th year and 22nd year. Design B will warrant maintenance in the 9th year, 18th year, and the 22nd, 7th year. Design C may warrant maintenance in the 8th year, maybe in the 15th year, maybe in the 23rd year. I may have a design 4, which may warrant only one maintenance. There can be design 5, which may warrant a maintenance in the 10th year and 21st years. Now I have got five designs. Payment design is not single design. There are five designs. 
when you try to compare the cost, initial construction cost, overlay cost, maintenance cost, the vehicle operating cost, and the salvage value at the end of the life of all the five designs that we considered, when I spend little more initially, even though initial cost is more, the total life cycle cost is the lowest. That means we have to change our way of contracting to L1 only. The designer has to consider alternate designs, predict the performance, and come out with the best design, cost effective design, which will result in the lowest life cycle cost. At the same time, when materials are not available, I think there is a need to consider alternate materials. Alternate materials that we have started using the developments are the stiff binders and mixers at high temperature are required to minimize the rutting. But the stiff binders at low temperatures are likely to crack, non-load associated cracks. But we find that when you use some modified binders, we find that they improve the fatigue resistance. They try to improve the aggregate bitumen bonding. There's an improvement in the durability and they provide a thicker film of binder on the aggregates with the result they are they last longer. But remember, again, when you use a modified binder, the cost is more. So will you use a modified binder or not? The contractor will not use because why he should spend more. But as an agency, you should know that when I use a modified binder, even if you spend delta x more, that is worth spending that. I'll come to that issue. There are different types of modified binders available today. Some are plastomeric thermoplastic, elastomeric thermoplastic, synthetic rubber, natural rubber, or a crumb rubber. So the agency has to decide which will better. In the case of DBOT project, the concessioner decides out of these different modifiers, which binder will last longer. We find that many of the binders are lasting longer. Some of them do not last. So we should know which will last and which will not last. When you try to use this polymer modified binder, what it does is that it addresses majority of the distresses occurring on the prior polymer modified asphalt. They offer an improvement, re improved resistance to rutting. They have a reduced fatigue cracking. They mitigate thermal cracking. They resist top down cracking and improve the durability with a thicker asphalt binder with a higher asphalt content and reduce moisture damage. So, in a nutshell, provision of a modified asphalt will improve the life of the pavement. There is no doubt about that. But one has to decide what type of modified binder will last, whether it should be only the bearing codes or only the binder codes. Also, will there be reduction thickness? These are other issues that have to be debated. But a single line which I can tell is that consideration of modified asphalt will improve the performance of the bitumenous pavement. The other new material which I feel that R&B in Andhra Pradesh should consider is use of geosynthetics on a large scale. Where subgrade is weak, you increase the thickness of the pavement layers. So there are no material available today, good quality materials. Either way, we can reduce the thickness. Yes, it's possible. So if the subgrade is weak, I can improve the strength of subgrade by geogrades. It's possible. So in that case, you can reduce the thickness of the pavement layers. You can also go for geocells. I am uh, strongly advocating use of geocells in road payments. They are a three-dimensional honeycombed cellular structures. They are from extruded from polymeric materials. They are ultraviolet stabilized with carbon black. And the major beauty of this is that material is that it has got perforations. So any water that gets in will be able to come out of the pavement. No water will be stagnant. On the other hand, if you provide a yeah, with the granular layer, if there are too much of fines, water will not flow. So this can be filled with aggregates because we need confinement. To have confinement, we add fines. When you add more fines, it affects your permeability. On the other hand, you can fill these aggregates without fines in these geocells. You can, I can show an example here. This is what we did in a Gobind diary in Maharashtra. Geocells stretched. After it was stretched, fill that with aggregates, compact, over. What are the advantages here? If you look at the advantages of the unreinforced section for a 2,000 CBR, about 150 MSA, I require nearly about 975 millimeter of a pavement. On the other hand, if I use a geocell or a subgrade, I can knock off 
the thickness, I can bring down 975 to 735. If I use a geosol in the base and subgrade, I can bring down to 520. If I use geosol in the base, I can bring down to 865. So this IRC payment may last for 16 years, but this geosol layer will last for 20 years. Cost effectiveness, it has the lowest cost life cycle cost. On the other hand, even if the CBR is 10%, I, you can use the geosols. You can bring down thickness from 650 millimeter to 340 millimeter. The life is more, the cost is low. So uh, why you can ask me a question, why are we not using this so far? We were not using this so far because of the fact that IRC code was not available. Today, IRC code, IRC SP59 is available with work code example. I think Guru Vital also is here. He helped a lot in developing the code of practice. And so today the code of practice is available. I strongly advocate the use of geosynthetics in payment layers, which will reduce the great consumption, extend the life of the payment, and also improve the performance of these highways. So we require a huge quantity of materials in road construction, about 150 million cubic meters of aggregates are required. In many other states like West Bengal, aggregates are not available. They have to transport the aggregates over longer distances, maybe from Bihar. Even for transporting these aggregates over 200 kilometers or so, requires about 180 lakh liters of diesel for transportation alone. Many times the cost of transportation may be more than the cost of material. For the construction of pavements in Andaman and Nihopar, the aggregates are being transported from Vishakhapatnam by ship. So what is to be done? This is a challenge. Many other states have banned quarrying. In such cases, the, as per the Indian road construction industry capacity issues, we found we require nearly about 450 million tons of aggregates per year in the high growth rate. Maybe when you can, even when you consider low growth rate, we require about 170 million tons of aggregates every year. Do we have? This is an issue that has to be debated. So whatever may be you decide, the payment will deteriorate with the passage of time, mainly due to warranty, Due to fatigue, because of the heavy commercial vehicles, the payment will deteriorate. Secondly, when they are exposed to the environment, there may be some top-down cracking. Once the crack starts, unless you seal it with an emulsion, water will enter in of water. Because of oxidation of the binder, the surface is likely to crack. Once the water enters, potholes form. And that is again a cause of delayed maintenance action, but payment will eventually deteriorate. Thirdly, there can be an inadequacy in the design. What I mean by the inadequacy in the design, this is a major problem which I have seen in the recent past. What I find as the inadequacies in the design is that you, the consultants mainly, design a payment, testing some material available nearby, assume that 10% CBR, 15% CBR, 12% CBR, 8% CBR. They design the payment. Work is standard, work is awarded. When you go to site, the quarry, which can give you the temple CBR may not be available. So if in many, secondly, even if you do not compact the subgrade soil to the maximum dry density at OMC, a soil which is supposed to give temple CBR can give 8% CBR, or it gives 7% CBR, or 6% CBR. If that is the case, the payment thickness requirement is more but you already awarded the work for a 10% CBR. So the design eventually that is on ground is an under design. If there's a problem with an inadequate subsurface drainage, the payment will again fail. More importantly, let, uh, the recent forensic investigation I have carried out, I find that the material quality as constructed has no relation to what has been designed, construct, considered for the design. It, Unfortunately, the quality control reports do not match with what has been buried. So that causes frequent deterioration of the payment. The payment develops a fatigue cracks with the permanent deformation. There's a rutting, that's also a cracking. These are some of the natural highways, NH45 between Tambaram to Bendivanam. It developed a rutting all along the wheel path, or it can also develop cracks like this. If the payment starts developing the deterioration like this, or even this is from Ahmedabad Padodara Expressway. You assume yeah, we now designed it for 120 kilometers per hour operating speed. 
And this Nagpur Mumbai, I think it is designed for 140 to 150 kilometers per hour speed. So a vehicle traveling at 100 kilometers per hour travels 30 meters per second. Assuming that he applies a brake, there are two components, lagging dis lag distance and the braking distance. So he will not be able to stop the vehicle before colliding with the vehicle ahead. So extensive bleeding is again another cause, again a constructability issues. The payment performance will start deteriorating from the day it is open to traffic. Initially, the rate of deterioration is slow and the rate of deterioration becomes faster beyond a certain age. If you do the maintenance when the pavement is in good condition, good condition, it is called as a preventive maintenance. If you delay it, it needs a minor rehabilitation. Later, it warrants a major rehabilitation and a reconstruction of the pavement. If you maintain the road here, if it costs one unit, if we delay it here, it may cost, here it may cost less than a unit, it may cost $1, it may cost 4 to 5. So what if, if generally PWD or any government agency thinks is that, okay, 200 crores is required, I can maintain 200, four lane, 200 kilometers of four-lane highway. But when the road deteriorates like this, within that money, next year, if you think that 200 crores, you will not be able to maintain the 200 kilometers you will be able to do only 130 kilometers. One year later, you may be able to maintain only 100 kilometers. So more and more you delay, more and more will be the maintenance cost. I'll come back to this issue with a class example at the end of the lecture. So there are different preventive maintenance treatments that are available, like fox seal, slurry seal, microsurfacing, and surface dressing. We generally do not adopt any of this. I wish by this uh, lecture, Many of the, I think, other Pradesh r and can set an example of undertaking a preventive maintenance treatment which can extend the life of the payment. I'll come to that in the next slide. There are also minor, minor rehabilitation treatments which can be done for resurfacing, like a semi-dense bitumen concrete. Ministry has removed, but IRC code is still there. Or it can even be a bitumen concrete. Or major rehabilitation can be consisting of a binder course and a surface course. There are different materials available here. So what I was mentioning here at this point of time is that when the payment is good, if I do a preventive maintenance, a fox seal, slurry seal, microsurfacing, the quality of the payment improves and it extends the life of the payment by two to three years, depending upon when you apply the treatment. So if you try to find out the benefits, assuming that I do a major rehabilitation here, vis-a-vis -vis, I do a preventive maintenance here. Is it cost effective? You may be asking me a question. A preventive maintenance will cost lesser, the rehabilitation will cost more. We look at the benefit cost ratios for about 250 is a benefit area, 7,000 vehicles, 5 lakh rupees, benefit cost ratio is 3.5. If you do a rehabilitation strategy for 1,000 is a benefit area, benefit area looks more, but it is very costly, the benefit cost ratio is 2. Therefore, it's like it's time that governments they look and think in terms of preventive maintenance treatment. I strongly I feel that of late, microsurfacing plays a very important role and it improves the riding quality, a new technology, adopted maybe in the past 10 or 15 years, is a preventive maintenance treatment. Even for bridge decks, you can adopt this. When you try to do this uh, microsurfacing on a given highway, so you can apply the microsurfacing, thickness is six to eight millimeter. It improves the riding quality Finished road surface is comparable to that of a, a bitumenous concrete surface. We can also, this is how it looks like after one minute, after one hour, after one day, you can open the road to traffic. Even wet weather, you can do because it's a polymer modified emulsion. The riding quality will be excellent, comparable to that of a BC. The cost price is cheap. It's less than 200 rupees per square meter. I am going to adopt this in IIT Madras campus. Maybe next month I will do this. But I, I am amazed that the performance of this microsurfacing, even on natural highways. So there are a number of bitterness mixes that are available today. BM, DBM, SDBC, BC, SMA, PMC, MSS. So they, uh, they, we adopt many of these in combination. BM and a DBM are a binder courses. SDBC and BC are the varying courses. SMA can be a binder course, can be a varying course. And again, we have got thin surfaces. So we can have different combinations, BM and a BC, BM and SDBC, DBM and a BC, DBM and SDBC, several combinations are possible here. 
But when you try to use BM, we find that there are too much of voids. And that's why myself and Professor Kantal have been advocating. Many other states have banned use of bituminous mechanism. But even in the case of DBM, there are two gradations. Grading one has more voids. It is not, uh, it has it uh, it has doesn't have segregation will be an issue that can even be rutting in the DBM layer alone. So this again a case of a sheer failure on NH7. What we found is that even though BC is likely to perform better on a God section, BC shears off. So BC is not the layer to be adopted. We found that SMA can be adopted. SMA is a gap graded mix, a rut resistant mix. It consists of high quality aggregates, asphalt rich binder, mineral filler, and cellulose fibers. It's a rut resistant mix. On expressways, I strongly believe the surface should be SMA, no bleeding will occur. Yeah, it offers a very high skid resistance, reduced water spring, reduced noise, durable mix, but it's costly because the binder, minimum binder content is higher than the BC use cellulose fibers, but we use polymer modified binder, it may be about 50% more than that of the BC, but it lasts longer. So this is something that is how a surface will look like. So these are something that new technologies that we need to adopt, especially in the case of expressways. When it comes to the issue of sustainability, this is one hill every time when I go to Bangalore, I take a photograph of this. We take aggregates from one hill after another, start constructing roads, maintain the roads, but is it sustainable? No. So what is the solution now? Finally, you'll get only queries like this. What is the solution now? Solution is that recycling is one of the several rehabilitation alternatives. Either you can provide a thick overlay or you can recycle the material and reuse it again. But you, you may ask me a question, will the recycle payment perform similar to that of a conventional design. You can see this is the performance curve for the conventional design. This is the performance curve for a recycled payment layer. You can find the slope of the line when you look. The slope of the line is much better. We found that recycled payments are performing much better than conventional designs. So there are, again, there are different techniques available. Whenever you find that in the inadequate riding quality, the excessive payment distress, reduced friction, more and more maintenance requirement, unacceptable road user cost, or there's an inadequacy in the structural design as I showed earlier. In that cases, you can go in for recycling. You can mill the entire material, depending upon the extent to which the distress has propagated. And this piece of black gold, I don't want to throw away this black gold. I want to reuse it again and again. There are different methods by which we can mill and use the material. There are different techniques available here again. Hot in place recycling, hot recycling and cold recycling. Again, it can be in plant or it can be in situ, central in, in place recycling. Similarly, cold also can be in a central plant or can be in situ. Or you can also go for a full depth reclamation. I'll touch upon each of these in the next five minutes or so and before I conclude. The considerations for selecting the recycling alternative is depending upon that type of distress, extent of the distress, and the severity, engineering considerations, cost economics, availability of the expertise to do the recycling. I think in India, we are fairly now expertise is available, equipment are available, concessioners are willing to do this. And on one hand, there is no other alternative as well because aggregate is not available. So you can go in for hot mix recycling in a central plant if there are defects in the surface, deformations, cracks, or maintenance patching, but, but the percentage of wrap depends upon the recycled mix properties. That is a, that is a catch there. You can go, what, what is the issue here? In a case of a drum mix plant, you in, here feed the virgin aggregates, and here you feed the wrap. The virgin aggregates only are heated by the flame. This wrap is already a reclaimed asphalt pavement material, which again has got asphalt. So I would not like to heat this again because already is hardened. But these virgin aggregates, when I have milled, will lack fines. So these aggregates, it, when they travel from here to here, they get heated. <clears throat> they, in turn, will heat the wrap. That decides or that dictates what should be the dosage of wrap that can be considered. In India, we permit up to 30% wrap. 
70 percent will be the Vajanagari case, 30 percent will be the rank. Internationally, I don't think they can go in for more than 30, but we can consider. So this is a double barrel drum from Aztec, wherein there are two drums, one inner and one outer shell. Why allow the agricase to get into the inner drum? I input the flame here, hot air gas stream. It heats the agricase. These hot aggregates in turn will be shifted to the outer drum shell. In the outer drum, they are not directly exposed to the flame. And with the dose, with the result, we will be able to use a higher percentage of wrap but studies are to be carried out. So we can also go in for hot in-place recycling when there are surface defects, corrugations, surface rutting, we can go in for this. But 100% of material can be recycled here. But we need large space for the maneuverability of the vehicles. So it's like an equipment train. When you have an equipment train, there's a heater. It heats the surface. You can decide to what depth you are going to mill, depending upon the distance. It mills the material. There's a pug mill here. The heater mixer is mixed. You bring the virgin aggregate, pave it, and the road is finished. So we will be able to do three to four lane kilometers in a day easily by a hot in-place recycling. This is exactly what they did in NH45. So without major rehabilitation, they managed by, we say, in-situ recycling, in-place recycling. We can also go in for a cold mixed recycling, which is a central plant, wherein all types of cracks except fatigue caused by base failures can be considered in a central plant because I can mill only the bitterness plant, bitterness material. But, but they require aeration, voids are more. Therefore, this coal mix can only be used either as a base course or as a binder course. A varying course should invariably be a hot mix. So coal in place recycling can also be done wherein you can mill the bitumen layer as well as the base course, add a foam bitumen and relay it back as an excellent binder course. What I try to do is that in a hot bitumen, I inject water, I inject air the volume of bitumen increases by 14 to 17 times. So when they try to expand, when I want to construct a road, I mill the material, I inject to the bitumen, uh, the foam bitumen, it tries to mix the material together and they can be laid. So if you consider the strength of this layer in terms of modulus, the conventional granular material can have a modulus of 300, 250, 300 MPa. But this we found can give you a modulus of nearly even 1,000 MPa. But considering the variability, IRC restricts to 600 MPa, but still, it's much better than any of the other layers BM. And we have constructed for the first time, I did the mix design for the Chennai Tada Highway, wherein we have provided this foam, foam bituminous mix in the year 2011. Even today, you can come and see, nine years of past, no distress, not even no rating, no crack. So we have got confidence and then we brought the IRC 120, which is a coal recycling manual. We come to the next issue. I think. So this is a case of last is a case of full depth reclamation. When you find the sub base layers, subgrade layers have, do not have the structural capacity, you can mill the entire bitumen layer, old bitumen layers, old waterbound macadam or wet mix macadam layer, and then you can provide a good base course with a cement stabilized layer. In a coal in place recycling, only this, I mill the top layer or maybe a part of this, but in the case of full depth reclamation, I can mill the entire material, add a cement and form and use it, reuse it as an excellent base course material. So advantages, significant structural improvements are possible. Most of the payment distresses can be treated, right? Quality is improved, hauling cost is minimized, minimum air quality problems and payment widening is also possible. Of late, Vidyan has started constructing several roads using a full depth reclamation technology. I think technology is already in place. I think many of the uh, roads wherein you want to rehabilitate old roads, you can definitely consider FDR as one of the best technologies that can be considered. To conclude, before I conclude, we need green highways. I think we cannot take aggregates indiscriminately construct the road and maintain the roads. We need an environment management system. We have to make use of the local available materials. Slow stability is an issue. Recycled materials are to be used. I think we have to stack the rainwater. I think that is another thing that we need. A stormwater has to be saved, conserved. 
good quality construction, scenic views, long lasting payment, life cycle cost, and use of warm mix as well, which can extend the timing available for paving. These are something that we have to introduce in the contracts, in, in the bids, so that the highways which you construct last longer and are green. Other innovations in payment construct technology, what I found is an intelligent compaction. This is a new technology which is a fine place in the country. So you'll be able to see, the, uh, the driver will be able to see the locations where the compaction is adequate, compaction is inadequate. Accordingly, the amplitude, frequency and can be adjusted and we get a good compacted mix. There's also a possibility to introduce the infrared thermography revolutionizes hot mix as well paving. You find that when the temperature is not uniform for the entire paved area, wherever you find that end dumps are cold, the temperature may be of the order of 80 degrees, 60 degrees, you'll find there will be premature failures. I think that is time that we look at infrared thermography to ensure the between of mix is perfect the same temperature and we, there will not be temperature differential causing premature distresses. And lastly, I think we are moving towards the pre-cost concrete payments. According to me, I wish my dream before my death is that today the road should not be there, tomorrow concrete road should be there. Is that possible? I think it may be possible. Pre-cost concrete payments will be the future in not only in India, across the world, if some of the slabs have failed, we can precast the slab, bring it back and assemble it. I never thought that we will be able to introduce that in India, but this is a precast concrete payment construction at Nagpur, thanks to Mr. Bongirwar and many other contractors and consultants at Nagpur. We have started, there are issues and concerns uh, in the construction of this, but we are fine tuning this, the designing, the joints in particular, a level surface wherein it can be laid, so these are issues and concerns. I think when there's a will, there is a way. Precast constraint technology will be the future of the Indian highways. So to conclude, the road of the future through innovation in design, construction, maintenance of the road is possible once we introduce new materials that are last longer for sustainable construction. It's time that we go from the conventional rule book to adopting alternate materials in the design like geosynthetics, polymer modified bitumen, stabilized layers. We have to consider the alternate designs, which will result in the lowest life cycle cost, which means we have to change our contracting procedure of evaluating alternate designs. New concrete techniques recycling should be given weightage. If some of the contractor says that he will do recycling for a road, and if you already tendered it for a conventional overlay, perhaps I feel that he should be given an option to consider recycling as an alternative. Use of network survey vehicle, we are now debating about the network survey vehicle, which can tell you about the performance of the different highways. National Highway has started in a very large scale. I wish that Andhra Pradesh State also considered the network survey vehicle. They have been doing this, but there are issues and concerns. That's why I say that they, not that Andhra Pradesh R&D is not doing it, but there's a lot of requirements of harmonization of the equipment, standardization of the equipment. They get like a lot of data, but they are not being fully utilized to the extent that is required. And we need an environmental friendly highways like green building norms. I think we have to bring in a green highway rating system, which will change the way we contract considering duly the life cycle cost. We will be able to see more environment-friendly, sustainable roads. I'm sure that if we adopt now, the future generations will appreciate the action taken by us. And they will also be able to enjoy what we have enjoyed all these years in a clean environment, environment-friendly design is what is needed. So at the, at the end, I thank the Andhra Pradesh Institute of Engineers for inviting me to deliver a talk and share my thoughts. I exceeded my time by about six minutes. Nevertheless, I think I wanted to convey what all the issues in the latest developments. There are many more developments, but within this 40 minutes time, this is what I can cover. So I thank all of you for patiently listening to my talk and thank you very much for the opportunity given to share my thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. Thank you very much, sir. Excellent talk, sir.
But this is not Andhra Pradesh State Center, sir. This is. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Newly, newly. Yeah, yeah. Newly formed yeah. Telangana State Center. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Very good talk, sir. Yeah. Uh, anybody can ask uh, any questions, sir. Any one two questions, we'll give them. Anybody want any clarification, not questions. Any. No, anything is okay. We are we are all used to teachers. Any question also is okay. Sir, you ask something now, sir. What's on the some? Yeah, sir wanted to ask me about the design. Yeah, I think now that IRC is available, I think you what I suggest is that the cons consultant should be made to give alternate designs. You should consider the life cycle uh, task. In routine departments, it is difficult. That is exactly what I'm telling. We the yeah, routine. But in our corporation. I take your suggestion and guidance. We will try to do some road with geo cell. Yeah. Yes. And, yes. You do. Madam. Yeah. And as not, a test mm -hmm. check, uh, we'll do three, four hundred meter or half a kilometer road, where we get loose soils. Of course, the material is a lot of available on our roads. Yeah. Correct. But as you suggested, uh, let us try and do the and, test. And you should also monitor the performance so that you'll get a confidence that it yes. performs better. Yes. That's not exactly you take, what. Uh, you take. Definitely, we, 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 I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Sir, I'll take it to our honourable minister. He is also nurse. very favour for uh, introducing innovative techniques. Yes, mm -hmm. I think Mr. Anjaya has wanted to talk something. Yeah, ask something. Yeah. Anjaya Garu, now, now, sir, now, sir. Uh, that is... he showed his hand. I thought that he wants to ask something. Anjaya is a honourable secretary. He wants propose a vote of. Okay. You want propose a vote of thanks, sir. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay thank you. Thanks, sir. Now, about Anjaya. Now. Our honor secretary Anjay on propose the vote of thanks. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Anjay Gar, vote to Anjay Gar. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yes, 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 yes. <coughs> Respected chief guests, dignitaries who are participated in the webinar, and our chairman, Dr. Rameshwara Garu, distinguished guests, fellow fraternity. Family members of Yes Raghavachari, media friends, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me immense pleasure to perform the pleasant duty of proposing vote of thanks. On behalf of the Telangana State Centre of IEI, I convey our sincere and profound thanks to Veera Raghavan Amrita Lingam, Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, IIT Chennai for having graced the occasion as chief guest on the eve of the endowment lecture or to pay tributes to Dr. S. Raghavachari, transportation consultant and delivered Dr. S. Raghavachari's sixth endowment lecture in a lucid way. I also convey our thanks to Dr. C. Vasanta, chief engineer and chief operating officer Hyderabad Road Development Corporation, who made it convenient to participate in this important event as a guest of honor and delivered <coughs> the endowment lecture in a very informative. Madam, the concept of uh, missing link is very good. I think it will solve the length of traveling and uh, economics also. I convey our thanks to Dr. Yes, Nagbushan Rauru, briefed about Professor Dr. S. Raghavachari. I convey our thanks to guests, past chairman of IE, joint honorary secretaries, committee members, fellow NITI, budding engineers of NIT, Varangal, who made it convenient to be with us in paying respects to Professor S. Raghavachari. I thank the management of media for their continued support to all our endeavors and activities. Once again, thank you, one and all, sir. Thank you. Okay. Namaste. Thanks, sir. We'll close by Janaka Ramana, sir. Shubhana me jage, tava 
ಶುಭ ಆಶಿಷ ಮಾಗೇ ಜಯ 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 ಜ